Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another empties video. I normally wait to do empties videos until like my empties drawer is so full I can't close it. <laughs> but I realized it had been a while since my last video, and when I looked in my drawer, I was like thinking, oh, okay, there probably won't be as many products in here, but there's a lot. <laughs> I think it's definitely more leaning towards hair care and body care this time, but we still have a decent amount of makeup in here as well. I do have a whole playlist with all of my empties videos. I'll throw it up in the cards if you would like to binge watch all of them in a row, but let's go ahead and get this organized and jump in because this is an entire full Sephora bag plus a little extra worth of empties. Okay, so let's start with hair care and then we'll jump into body care slash miscellaneous body things and then we'll get into skincare and makeup because I think that's going to actually be the longest amount of time spent here. So let's see, first things first, I have an empty of another Jumbo R&B hair moisturizer from Lush. I, a, I can't get over how good this smells. This is incredible. I absolutely adore. Uh, it's, uh, what is it? Avocado butter and jasmine. Okay. Uh, you can use this for either deep conditioning or styling. My favorite way to use this is as a deep conditioning treatment, which is why I did get the jumbo size. I recently, I've been doing my deep conditioning treatments overnight. So I actually, like right before I go to bed, will wet my hair, put in my deep conditioner, put it up into a shower cap, put my sleeping cap on top of it, and then sleep. And then I take my showers first thing in the morning. So then I wash it out then. And I've noticed, I think this is like one of my top three deep conditioning treatments. I absolutely adore this product. And if I don't already have another one in my like, you can't see it back there, but in my hair care drawer, I'm probably going to get another one. I actually need to try and get to a Lush sometime soon. Restrictions have been lifted, not 100%, but I'm still in New Jersey, you know, things are still kind of happening here. Um, but I do think my local Lush is open. I have like eight empty Lush pots, so I kind of want to trade those in and actually get like some face masks just, you know, to recycle and I'll probably get one of these because it's honestly one of my favorite hair care products ever. Next, we have a product that I was sent in PR a while ago and it's not normally this small. I cut it open to finish it. So this is the full size product right here. This is Mizani and this is the 25 Miracle Cream. So it's a leave-in conditioner treatment. I, this actually lasted me quite a long time. I finished up my other Mizani products that were sent to me through Influencer a while ago. This one just lasted so much longer. And honestly, I know the Mizani products are a bit expensive. That gel though, that gel is amazing. I think I talked about it in a previous empties video. I will be buying that again. This, I don't know if I'll get out of my way to buy it, um, but it was a good leave-in conditioner. Like, maybe not perfect for like putting it in and then styling right away which is kind of the way that i like to use a leave-in but if you were to just put this in and like let your hair air dry it looked really nice um so i do like how much product there is and how long it lasted but i have other kind of moisturizing leave-in treatments that i like better next i have this little sample this is from madam cj walker and this is the inches uh, reconstructive protein treatment now I have not done too many protein treatments recently and I did look into them because I was having this rut with my hair over the last couple of months. It's definitely a lot better now. But I was growing my hair out. It was at an odd stage where everything was kind of growing out but it was looking weird and it was really frizzy and I don't know. I think it's because I was also really stressed out and everything. But I was thinking, you know, maybe my hair just doesn't have enough protein because I am deep conditioning. I am, you know, doing my normal hair care routine and everything else seems to be okay but it was still like my, my hair was kind of limp and like lifeless but like now I've got like really nice curls so it's definitely gotten better and so I was looking into protein treatments I've got another couple in my um hair care drawer this one I actually liked a lot now with protein you can't keep them in your hair for too long you literally keep them in for like 20 minutes maybe 10 max and then you jump in the shower and you wash it out so it's something I have to wake up early and like put into my hair and leave for a few minutes and then jump into the shower but I did see a noticeable difference and I'm glad that I got this sample I believe this was a sample from Sephora a while ago and it was a good size sample I actually did get a full two uses out of this and I did see some more bounce into my hair once I was done with it so I'll definitely maybe add this to my loves list if I see it at Sephora or look into getting one it's your friend editing Monica. Unfortunately, I tried looking up the Madam CJ Walker brand. I think Sephora is no longer carrying it at all. Could not find it on the website. I could barely find a place to actually buy the entire brand as a whole. So unfortunately, I don't know what's going on there. Next, we have a deep conditioning treatment that I just finished, and this is from Shea Moisture. This is the Coconut and Hibiscus Curl Enhancing a Smoothie. Now, this one is, yeah, like I said, Coconut and Hibiscus. I did not like the scent on this 
uh, like ah, oh, I hate the scent and I, I know I haven't had it for that long like I literally just picked this up not too long ago but the scent is just it's not for me it's not a scent that I like I think it's because I don't really like coconut and the hibiscus I think it was too sweet and too strong so that kind of made me dread using this product that being said it did do a good job of moisturizing my hair I also know that there are other, a bunch of other deep conditioning treatments from Shea Moisture that I like better. So I have to say, if you're really sensitive to scents, I would not recommend this coconut and hibiscus line because that scent was strong and I did not like it. Especially like I'm going to sleep with this in like as a deep conditioning treatment. So I was not a fan and I hate the scent so much. So no, it wasn't for me. I like that each one of these products has just like my hair in it in some way. Oh my god. Next we have a conditioner that I really really like. This is the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk 3-in-1 conditioner. I've actually noticed a slight difference in my hair now that I've stopped using this conditioner. I miss this conditioner and I need to get it again. Um, this was actually a gift from my aunt back in like Christmas. She got me two full bottles of this conditioner for Christmas and it's amazing. I love this conditioner so much. The only thing I don't like is the packaging. This should be in a tub like the deep conditioning treatments. Trying to get this thick conditioner through this was horrible. It's it's terrible. It's too thick of a conditioner to have a pump. If I do buy this again, I think I very well may like clean out my Lush pot or something and just depot this into a pot because it's just too much to try and get out of this little spigot thing. Anyway, that being said, the product is incredible. I love this conditioner. It smells delightful. It's It's got like that nice fresh clean not like laundry but like fresh like a salon kind of but not like harsh i don't know if my descriptions are helping or making this worse but i really like the scent of this and i need to look this up on amazon and see if i can buy it again the last hair care product that i have here is one that i was actually kind of surprised i didn't like as much because this came really highly recommended like throughout youtube and this is from curls this is the blueberry bliss curl control jelly i used up the entire bottle and I thought this would be a much firmer hold gel than it ended up being. I need, especially like in the summer where like my hair tends to frizz, I need a like a really, really strong gel, like maybe to even make my hair like really crunchy, just so that it lasts throughout the four days in between my wash days. And this just wasn't, it wasn't enough hold for my hair. I had to use this with another gel that I'm still using in order for it to look okay. And I've got, I know that there are other gels out there where I only need to use one gel and not bring in another one. So I'm glad I tried it. It did smell really nice, but it just wasn't a strong enough gel for me and my hair type and my hair texture. So that's all the hair care. Let's jump straight into body care. I only have a couple of things, mainly some lotions. But first I have this uh, shaving cream from Venus and Vera Bradley, which did, they did a collab together on like a razor and some shaving cream. This was sent to me through Influencer, so this was PR. I tested this out. It's a shaving cream, you know, for your legs and whatnot, but I don't know if I just had a reaction to the ingredients here or maybe it was just too scented, but this made my legs really, really dry and irritated after shaving with them. And I tried this on my legs, on my arms, and on my underarms. Same reaction everywhere. So this wasn't for me. It's technically not an empty. There's a lot of product left in here and I don't want to just get rid of it. So I'm going to see if a family member is interested in trying a shaving cream because I just could not use this. It just irritated my skin too much. So unfortunately, I had to give this a bad review and just not use it. But, you know, that's why they send out PR and that's why you have to look at reviews because not every product is going to work for everyone. Next, I have another product that I was sent through Influencer. This was kind of a sample size of this Native toothpaste. It's a charcoal toothpaste. Now, I know Native through their deodorants. I've seen a lot of ads for their deodorants. I actually picked one up a couple of weeks ago to try out. And as I tested it out, I was getting really bad irritation and ingrown hairs on my underarms. And so I was like, hmm. I don't know. So I put it away just to, you know, leave it for a few weeks. I went back to my regular deodorant, which is going to come up next, and I haven't gone back to it yet. So I'm meh on the deodorant. I didn't even know they had toothpaste. So I did get sent this toothpaste, and I've never been one to really use charcoal toothpaste. I really like this toothpaste. It's It, like, tasted really good, and I noticed a difference, like, in the actual whiteness of my teeth because I do love to use whitening toothpaste. And I feel like after a while, I kind of got used to the same whitening toothpaste. I tend to go for the Crest 3D White toothpaste. Uh, this one I really liked. I am going to be looking into um, purchasing this, the full size, because I did like it a lot. Speaking of deodorant, I normally don't think I include deodorant in here because I kind of just use the same deodorant like forever, and it's this one from Dove. It's the Advanced Care Go Fresh. It's the Cool Essentials, the one with the cucumber on it. It's my go-to 
it works really well it smells really good on me i've just recently tried to start trying other deodorants now that it's not the height of summer because i do sweat a lot and i know this one works for me and keeps me dry and like just smelling good like i said i tried the native one not a huge fan but i'm gonna go back and test it out in a few weeks just to see if it actually was that deodorant or if i was just you know shaving a bit different or if it was because of the summer so i'm gonna go back to test that but this has been my go-to deodorant for a long time and i think i have three backups of this i try to buy them like in the packs of like five you can get at costco you know so this is my go-to for lotion this is one i just picked up at cvs like just on a, actually walgreens i think just like on a hunch because i saw a bunch of youtubers like this brand and i loved this lotion this is from hemp's and this is the scent exotic green tea and asian pear it smelled so delightful and was so moisturizing i loved the heck out of this lotion and i want to get it again but only in this scent because i tried i like i sniffed the other scents in the store this was like towards the early you know stages of covid so i wasn't breaking any rules yet but like this smelled the best out of all of them and i think if i were to buy from them again it would only be this scent all right last but not least for body care i have two little lotions from notoriously morbid i picked up two of their lotions in the sense ethereal dance and irrational fancy i picked up quite a few products from them that i just wanted to try out i love the packaging it feels really nice and these smelled really good my only downside is that they weren't super moisturizing like i think they were more for like the fragrance than they were for like moisturizing and they did, they did smell really nice the scent did last a long time a lot longer than like your typical lotion scent would but for someone that is looking for more moisturizing aspects of their lotion as opposed to just the scent of the lotion um these weren't like 100 percent my favorite but i did like them Okay, so now that I'm all organized, let's jump into skincare. The first product I have was sent to me in PR from Mix Easy, and this is a custom gentle face cleanser. I recently did a whole video on my current skincare routine, and then I reviewed some products from Mix Easy and Duval. Ooh, <laughs> it's my fourth time filming that clip. If you missed that video, I'll throw it up in the cards. But overall, my review was that for um, bespoke like custom skincare products, something like a face wash, wasn't really worth it because it's pretty expensive and you can find really good alternatives just at the drugstore by itself. So while I enjoyed this face wash, it wasn't honestly anything better than what I can get at Walgreens or CVS. So I finished it, but I wouldn't purchase this with my own money. Next, another product I got in PR. This is from Influencer. This is the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. This was like a, a week and a half's worth. And to be honest, first of all, this smelled terrible. <laughs> smelled horrible i really didn't like putting it on and b because it's such a small sample let me actually pull out the bottle so you can see what it looks like this is the sample and because it was such a small sample and i was only using it for like a little less than two weeks i didn't really see a big difference in my skin you know one that would either justify the cost of this which like the full size of this is way over a hundred dollars or justify like putting it with that smell. I did not like the smell of this. I don't know what it is with like smelly products, like especially this where it's going right on my face. No, thank you. <laughs> By the way, I do have my influencer profile set to public if you're interested. If you're also an influencer, let me know. I'd be really willing to follow you there because I am trying to be more up to date with all of my updates and reviews there as well. So if you did not know, after I film an empties video like this, I go on to influencer and I post written versions of all of my reviews. Unless it's already a product that I've talked about before and I don't repost reviews. So if you're really interested in like fully well thought out uh, reviews with good pictures, check out my influencer profile. Next, we have some lip care. I have two empties of this Blistex medicated lip balm, which is like my favorite. I, I, I call them chapstick. It's like how you call all tissues Kleenex, even though it's the brand. I call it a chapstick, even though it's a Blistex. But it's my favorite. It smells really good. It moisturizes really well. Back when I was still at my office, I used to keep one in the office and one in my purse and one at home. But now that it's, I'm just here, <laughs> I've just got them all here. But I do like them a lot. And I buy them like in packs of three at like Walgreens or CVS. This is actually a body care I forgot to include in a previous section, and this was a little lotion. This is from The Body Shop, and this is the British Rose Scent, which I just love rose-scented anything. It's so nice, and this was really a really, really nice hand cream. My only complaint is that it's too small of a bottle. I feel like I went through this fairly quickly when I was using it, because I like to moisturize after I wash my hands. So, like, I do that several times a day, especially now, you know, COVID. <laughs> But I, I felt like I went through this a little too fast for how kind of expensive, you know, the body shop is. So I don't know if I would buy another, like, small one like this. 
but if I had the chance to buy, I think they had these like in tubs, I'd probably get a tub because it smells really good and it really moisturized my hands. Another uh, lip treatment that I have is this one from Aquaphor. Honestly, if I were to choose between Blistex and this Aquaphor one, I'd probably pick the Blistex just because uh, the Blistex is like a tube, not a tube, but it's like a, a chap. <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling it a chapstick because you can just put it on like that and it's like a solid, you know, that you apply. This is a little bit messier because it's like a tube that like product comes out of and so I noticed that it did get a little messier and then this one, I couldn't wear this underneath lipstick or makeup. I noticed that if I put this on and let it sink into my skin and put makeup on top of it, the makeup would break up like around my mouth so it wasn't the best for that but if you're looking for something to wear like right before bed as like a really really intensive treatment kind of like the like more expensive ones you would see at sephora i would recommend this one instead because it's just as good if not better and it's a lot cheaper <laughs> Next, I have a product that I'm probably gonna mess the name up because the packaging like totally wore off. And this is just from regular use. Like I didn't beat this like packaging up. <laughs> this is from Pixie and this was the Rose Ceramide Cream. This was part of when I was like piecemeal buying Pixie products to get together enough for a full like review. So I am gonna keep this packaging and include it in my upcoming Pixie review video. I did just film a huge Pixie haul, like a collective haul of all my products. I forgot to put this in there because it's already done. But if you missed that video, I will throw it up in the cards. And essentially, I realized I had never seen a Pixie video from someone who wasn't sponsored or was not sent the products in PR. Like, essentially, I had not seen anyone buy the products and then review them. So I really, really wanted to, like, try the products out and give my honest thoughts on them as someone who has to pay a decent amount of money for them. Because here in the States, it's, I think in, like, Europe, it's a drug drugstore brand, like CoverGirl and Maybelline. But here in the States, they're, like, Sephora prices. So I really wanted to see whether or not, you know, they're actually worth it. This product, this moisturizer, it was just like, okay. Like it was a little bit better than what I would get at like CVS or Walgreens, but definitely not worth the 20 or something dollars that this is worth. And I bought this like off of Depop because I saw someone was selling a brand new unopened one because I think they got it. I forgot how they got it, but they didn't want it and it was brand new. And I was like, oh, I will buy that. And so I bought this like even cheaper than like the retail price. Still wasn't worth it. So, unfortunately, this one product so far was a dud. Next, I have this product from CeraVe. This is my Skin Renewing Retinol Serum. This is my favorite retinol serum. I've talked about this many, many times before on my channel, but this is my go-to retinol serum. It's really affordable. I typically get it either on Amazon or at a Walgreens slash CVS in my area. Just my go-to. I use it every night. Last but not least for skincare, I have a couple of my Ordinary products because most of my skincare right now is from The Ordinary because I love it and it's really affordable. The first one is the Caffeine Solution 5%. I use this on my um, under eyes and on my like lid and then in between every morning, every evening, it deep puffs. It just makes me feel so much better and I feel like I did see a difference in my fine lines under my eyes over a long period of time. Definitely enjoyed that. The next is my 100% organic cold pressed rosehip seed oil. Again, I love this. I've seen over time a huge difference in uh, the moisture level of my skin as well as the um, acne marks and red marks on my skin. I use this every night. I mix it in with my moisturizer. We then have another vitamin C solution. This is the Assorable Glucoside Solution 12%. This is definitely not my favorite vitamin C. The one that I'm using right now, which is a 15%, is my favorite, but I did have to kind of use this as a stepping stone because I mentioned before in previous videos where I started from like their least, like their lowest percentage vitamin C and just slowly worked my way up. So this was a stepping stone, but now that I'm at the point where I can use the 15% and I see a big difference in the 15%, I'm going to stay there. So again, I would only recommend this if you're working your way up, <laughs> up through the levels of vitamin C that The Ordinary has. Um, but that being said, since I'm now at the point where I can use the 15%, I'm probably from now on only going to buy the 15%. So that's everything for skincare, and I feel like I've been talking for forever. <laughs> let's jump into makeup. All right, starting first, let's do um, two quick setting sprays. The Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. I feel like I have had this for so long. I got this in like a boxy charm, which it's been a while since I've had boxy charm. I've had this for so long. It's a really nice setting spray. I have to say, it really gives you the illusion of a glow. It doesn't do what I would typically want out of a setting spray, which is like melting all my powders together, really giving me a nice like finished look with my powders. This really just kind of sets over the face and gives you the illusion of like the glow. So if you were to spray this over a lot of powders where you look kind of dry, you would still look kind of dry, but you would have like a glow on top of it. I don't know if I'm making sense, but this wouldn't really like penetrate and really meld 
powders together. This would just sit on the top and look pretty. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to say. That being said, that's why it took me so long to use this because I'd only use a little bit of it. Like I really didn't need too much because you can go too much with this and look like an oil slick. You really can. So it's, it's honestly, it's too expensive like for me to buy for how often I use it. So I'm not going to buy again, but I'm happy I finally finished this. Next, we have one of my go-to setting sprays that I adore and I use daily. This is from Wet n Wild, and this is the Photo Focus 3-in-1 Primer Water in Rose. They say it's a primer water, but I use it to, I could use it just on my regular face with no makeup on. I can use it as a primer. I can use it as a setting spray. I typically tend to use this just as a setting spray because it's so nice. This and the Milani are like my favorite setting sprays of all time. I love this scent. I love the rose because of course I like everything scented rose and it just works really well to meld my powders and make my makeup last all day. A primer that I just finished that I really liked is from AOA Studio and this is the Aqua Hydrating Face Primer. My only like gripe with this product is that I wish it came in a bigger packaging because I feel like I went through this a bit quicker than I should but this was a really good hydrating primer. I adored this primer. I just wish I had more of it so I'm probably gonna buy more but I guess I can't really complain too much because it's literally a dollar. But it's a really good, if you're looking for a good affordable hydrating primer, this one. Two foundations I have recently finished. One is from Stellar Cosmetics, which I've only seen like in passing on the Sephora website and it was pricey. I was on Depop or another uh, Poshmark uh, a couple of months ago and I saw this on sale from someone who just didn't want it anymore and it was like half off and I was like ah I could use some foundation so I picked it up it was a really good shade match for me this is the lightest shade it's like L01 and I, I liked the foundation but I didn't like it enough to pay the 40 whatever it was worth like it was worth what I bought it half off on Poshmark for but it's not worth the full price so uh, I'm glad that I tried it I got out of my comfort zone and tried something new but I would not repurchase and especially at full price. Next we have one of my favorite foundations that I'm gonna have to rebuy because I think this is the last one that I had in my collection but I don't have the shade that I need right now. This is from Catrice. This is the HD Liquid Coverage Mattifying Foundation. I adore this foundation. It's so affordable too. The only thing is 030 Sand Beige is way too dark for me right now because I am Casper right now. Um, I need to purchase the lightest shade. I, have, I don't think I've ever bought the lightest shade before, so I have to see if that's a good match for me, but I love this foundation. It's affordable. It's a glass bottle. It feels fancy. I love the dropper. I love the coverage. I love absolutely everything about this foundation. <laughs> Next, I have two concealers, one an old favorite and one a new one that like really, really surprised me. The first old favorite is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. This is my only go-to concealer for the summer because I sweat a lot. I mentioned that earlier and I tend to sweat on my face like right here which is typically where my concealer meets my foundation. Every other concealer I've tried has broken down here when I start sweating except for this one. This is an affordable concealer. It is amazing and it stays in place during the summer. So I typically tend to use this like every summer because it's just it's affordable. It works. The only thing I don't like is a little sponge tip that it comes with so I just take off the sponge tip. Yeah so it's not that hard to do. I just apply it with a concealer brush and then blend it out with a sponge. I love this. I can't even count how many of these I've gone through because they're so great. And I love the packaging because you can really use all of it up and it's just a twisty twist. So you know you've gotten everything out. Great. The concealer that really surprised me is this one from Tarte. This is the Tarte Hydra Sealer. And this is a sample that I got with a Sephora order a while ago. It wasn't the perfect shade for me, but I was shocked by how well this performed on my under eyes and also as an eye primer because I like to, whenever I test out concealers, I always like to test it as a spot concealer under my eyes and as an eye primer because that's typically the ways that I use concealers. This worked so well. It was so moisturized. It did not crease. It looked great. So now I really need to get my hands on a full size of this. I'm probably going to do it. I saw a few holiday kits from Tarte. So I might pick up a couple of holiday things from Tarte, but I really want to try a full size of this concealer because it just blew my mind. Now in the total opposite direction, a product that I hated <laughs> is this tinted brow gel from ABH. I, I, was, I got this because I thought it would be enough for me to just like put it through my brows and have enough tint there for it to, for me not to need to really like fill them in, right? This really didn't do that. It wasn't the right shade. This is the darkest shade they have, but it's still a really warm brown, which if you've seen me and my channel, you know I really like a nice dark black brow. This wasn't it. 
so I couldn't really use it on its own. But then if I like filled in my brows like normal and then put this on top, it wasn't even a good brow gel, which is shocking because their clear brow gel is so good, but this was so trash. It was, it was, I hated, I hated using this. Every time I put this on, I hated it. So I was like, you know what? I'm done. I gotta just get, I'm done. <laughs> Next, we have a uh, mascara that I tried out, and this is from Essence. This is the Lash Princess Volume Mascara. So this is not the green bottle. My favorite mascara of all time is the Lash Princess, ooh, Lash Princess False Lash Effect, which is the green bottle. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. So this is a different version of it. This is the volume version. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan. It worked okay. Honestly, it worked better than like 50% of found foundations. Honestly, it worked better than like 50% of mascaras that I've tried, but it wasn't as good as the original. And since I know the original, it's so affordable, uh, I'm gonna go back to buying just the green bottle. The, the red bottle just wasn't for me. All right, and last but certainly not least, I have a sad one. Sad because this is a Stila Glitter Ink Glow that dried out on me. I've had, honestly, I've had this for so long, so I can't really be surprised that it dried out on me, but I am. This is the shade Molten Midnight, and it was this really dark, pretty shade. But honestly, I have to admit, it's not one that I would reach for on a daily basis. This is like a dark, smoky eye, date night, you know, New Year's Eve kind of look. And I was not doing it often enough to have, should have bought this. Honestly, I should not have bought this because I don't use it enough. And clearly, I didn't because it dried out, which is sad. It's really, really sad. <laughs> But knowing what I know now, I wouldn't ever buy a full size of this. They do have mini sets, especially around the holidays. So if there was a mini version of this, I'd probably get it. But knowing what I know now and my experience with it, I know I don't need it. So <laughs> there's plenty of other liquid shadows out there. I'm just sad that I didn't appreciate this one as much as it should have been. All right, so those are all of my recent empties, man. I feel like I've been talking for like an hour. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what's the last product you finished up and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.